So let's say we have a random variable called x, okay, which tells us how full a reservoir is. How full is a reservoir? And there are two extreme cases. Um, either it is totally empty like this one here, x would be zero, or it is basically totally full where the water is overflowing. This is where we say it has a value, that random variable has a value one. Okay, so x is basically element of the interval zero, one, including zero and one. So now if we want to calculate sort of probabilities of um, how, how likely is it that the reservoir, reservoir is certain uh, a certain level, then we need to know how that x is distributed. It's a random variable, it de depends on all sorts of things, mostly um, how much it rains and how much water people consume, of course. So let's say this random variable is described by the following two distributions. Okay, so we'll look at the PDF here. And let's say, well, I'll draw two coordinate systems first, and that's the CDF. So here we are looking at f of x, and here we are looking at little f of x. And on the axis we have x, and now let's use a different color. So let's say this distribution looks a little bit like this. Here's one and here's zero, so it's zero here and zero here. And then if we translate that into the CDF, that will look approximately like this. We know CDF is going to be one here, zero here. Then it is steepest right from the start and then the slope will, tr because it has the highest uh, distribution right at the start, so it's very steep and then the slope will just fall until we hit this. So that's the CDF approximately. Now, if you just have pictures, you can really only eyeball probabilities and the probability we're going to be interested in uh, here is the probability that x is larger than 0 0.75. Okay, it's at the reservoir is more full than 75%. So why is that 0 0.75? That is about here, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So what we're talking here is basically the size of this area on the PDF. So that is that probability, okay, the size of that area, or in terms of the CDF, Remember this value here, that's going to be somewhere here. This value here is f of, a, of 0 0.75, 0 0.75. That is the probability that x is smaller or equal to 0 0.75. So what we are interested in here is that difference, 1 minus, so that's the same as 1 minus f of 0.75. So without me giving you more information, this is really all you can you can do from this uh, from this example. But now I'll give you some more information so we can have some more fun with this example. So let's say this probability is described by the following density function three times 1 minus x squared for values of x in the interval between 0 and 1, and it's 0 otherwise. So let's say this describes, so this is this function here, okay? So once we have that, we can actually do a little bit more. So we know that this green area here, that is the interval from 0 0.75 to 1 of f of x dx. 
Okay. Or alternatively, let me take a different color. I'll do that in red. This size here, this area, is the interval from 0 to 0 0.75 of f of x dx. And that is the same as f of 0 0.75. I should really have that in red. F of 0.75. Okay. And what we want is 1 minus that value or that green area. So let's get out our integral calculus and let's write this down. So let's do that here. The integral between 0 0.75, 0 0.75 and 1 of f of x, which is 3, 1 minus x squared dx. So, we, when we integrate this, what we need is, we need the integrand of this, or the integral of this. And this is, so now you need to think about, we need a function Let's call that uh, briefly h of x. So in here we need a function h of x where the, let's do that here, a little side calculation, where the different, the, uh, let's do that here, d h of x. So if we differentiate that function, we should get 3 times 1 minus x squared. So, therefore, what do we need here? If in, in the differentiation, in the derivative we have squared, we know that we need a cubed here. Okay, um, that's great because that cubed in the, uh, in the differentiation goes to the front and we can see that here. So we don't need any other factor. So one minus x cubed will play a factor. Now here we just have that minus x, well now we have to use the chain rule and there will be a minus coming in here. We don't want a minus here because it's just a plus 3 a factor. Since that minus comes here, we have to have an extra minus here. So we'll get minus times minus for that to disappear. So let's briefly check this. If we calculate if we just call that h of x, and if we calculate the derivative from here, what we get is minus 3, that's the exponent, times 1 minus x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then due to the chain rule, we have to also find the derivative of this term inside here, which is just times negative 1. And here now exactly what we said will happen, that negative 1, that negative will cancel out, and we just get this, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's great. We can just erase this. That means from now on, we just need to plug in 1 and then 0 0.75. So we're first plugging in 1 for the x, so we get negative 1 minus 1 to the power of 3, and then minus, and now we plug in the 0 0.75. We have lots of minuses here, so we'll put that in parentheses, minus 1 minus 0 0.75 to the power of 3. So what do we get? This is 0 here, so all that term will fall away. Then we have minus times minus, that will fall away, so we're left with 1 minus 0 0.75, which is 0 0.25 to the power of 3. So that is a quarter to the power of 3, this is 1 over 64, and that is, if you plug that into your calculator, you will get 0 0.156, 0 0.0156 approximately, so a little less than 2% probability. So this probability here is approximately 0 0.0156. 0.0156. So the probability that the reservoir is fuller than 75% full is less than 2% if 
the level of the reservoir is distributed according to this PDF. Now here, this distribution isn't a particularly known or famous distribution for which we have tables. So we had to integrate to calculate the probabilities. Often, however, we will deal with known distributions like say the normal distribution, chi-square distribution, in which case we actually do have these values and we can often either read them off a table or use a function in Excel to give us the probability value. And then we could have calculated one minus that probability value. In this case, we couldn't do that. That means we had to in integrate.